James Ogby, so great to have you. Welcome, sir. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so it caught our attention, uh, the absolute <laughs> plummeting support of Arab Americans for Joe Biden's reelect. Let's put this up on the screen. This was the first national poll. You're actually quoted, I believe, in this article of Arab Americans since the war in Gaza began. It shows how deep that sense of betrayal goes. They say with only 17 percent of Arab American voters saying they will vote for Biden in 2024. That is a staggering drop from 59 percent in 2020. Um, your reaction to those poll numbers, James? Well, we, I mean, we expected there to be a reaction to the community, uh, in the community. I didn't expect it to be this way. Uh, it was much larger than anything I'd ever seen. It, it, there was a similar drop in support for Republicans and Bush, um, but it took six years to accumulate. Um, wow. uh, there was a very immediate reaction after um, uh, Obama to, uh, to Trump. Um, but that again took over a year. This was like a four week, uh, drop in, in support. And, uh, while to some extent there'd been a decline in favorable ratings as the national numbers went, this drop was not only significant in terms of support for the president, but I, look, I've been on the DNC for 30 years. And when, uh, we'd had a almost two to one, uh, Democratic ID as opposed to Republican ID. And now it's like 23% say they identify as Democrat and 32% Republican. It's the first time in 27 years of polling that Democrats are in the minority. Uh, wow. That that was really striking. They There's a kind of a frustration. And interesting, it was across the board. Hmm. The, the first, second generation born here versus the immigrant, all hmm. the different religious subgroups, country of origin, people are just traumatized by what he is and is not doing on this on this situation. James, uh, what states in particular, everyone talks about Michigan, perhaps there are others you can highlight, where this is going to be a particular problem for Joe Biden. Should this continue? Should his actions continue? And we get to election day. Well, the, the, the states I think that we most focus on are the ones that the Biden campaign focused on with us in, in 2020. They put a lot of energy into getting us out uh, and giving us, you know, a, a support in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Uh, that's going to be a tough uh, lift. Uh, it's going to be a difficult one this time. We have important numbers in Virginia, but Virginia is, uh, the, the margin of Virginia was larger than the Pennsylvania, Michigan numbers, uh, margins. And we have lots of people in California, but again, that's the state where <laughs> the, the, the numbers overall, I mean, uh, almost a half million uh, Arab Americans in California, but the number of Californians is so large that the, 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 the fraction isn't as great as it is in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Uh, Pens those two states are the ones I think are the, are the most concerning right now. So what the uh, Biden team is telling reporters is like, yeah, we know they're not happy, but it's a long way till election day, number one. And number two, the opponent's going to be Donald Trump. And Trump is out there floating a Muslim ban. He was the best friend of Bibi Netanyahu, gave him everything he wanted when he's in office. So they're betting that the um, you know visceral rawness of the emotion right now fades over time. And that also with the you know greater evil of Trump hanging out here, that that will be enough to get people back in the Democratic camp. What's your response to that theory of the case? I don't want to alienate myself or the community from, <laughs> from, from the Biden White House, but that's rude and condescending, basically. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, you guys don't matter and, and screw you. You don't have a choice, so you'll come back. Uh, that's not the case. Um, I saw in 2020 people's frustration. I worked on the Gore. I was a senior advisor to the Gore campaign. 13.5% voted for Nader. They just weren't going to do it. They did wow. the same with Hillary uh, in in uh, in 2016. Uh, they stayed away. Um, the question is, uh, I personally, myself, DNC member for 30 years, I'll, I'll vote for Joe Biden. I mean, because I know what the alternative is. Uh, but can I go, having built credibility with my community over the last 50 years of doing this work, 40 of them full time, can I go to them in Michigan and say, I need you to blah, blah, blah. I, I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm willing to risk, you know, 40, 50 years of, of credibility and organizing a community to get booed out of the room. And so <laughs> they have to be a little sensitive to the fact that if Jewish votes matter, Arab votes matter, Latino votes matter, black votes, we all matter. And you got to give us something. You just spent three years telling us that 
Palestinians and Israelis deserve equal measures of blah, 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 and did nothing in those three years to show you meant it. Uh, and now we're seeing the consequences of that, an enabled Israel, an abused Palestinian population, and you're telling us, oh, you'll forget about it in a year. Mm, sorry, probably won't. Right, yeah, probably won't indeed. I wanna come back to something that you said about the rapid decline. You're talking about the decline, how it took several years for this to materialize against the Bush administration, how it took a while for this to materialize against, uh, against Trump. You also spoke there about increased Republican identification. Have you talked or uh, thought a little bit about why that is? Is it just Israel Gaza? Is there attempts by or you know successful efforts by Republicans in order to increase Arab American Republican identification? What are some of the issues that you see behind that? Number one, it's not an actual increase in Republican mm -hmm. identification. The Republican numbers have been fairly stable. They've ah, dropped I see. five, six points over years, but they've been in the high 20s, 30% range. And that's where they've been. That, that's, the, you know, look, in, into every life, a little rain must fall. We've got about 30 something percent Republicans in the Arab community. Huh? I mean, what can I do? That's where mm -hmm. they are. And even in the the, the years of, of Obama, when the that was two to one Democrat Republican, it was 54% uh, Democrat, 27% Republican. They were hardcore. Got Even it. in Trump, uh, they were they were where they were in the high 20s. Um, the, the question is the precipitous drop in Democrats. Do I think that they will stay non-Democratic? Do I think that they'll vote for Trump? I don't. They may stay home. They may find a third candidate. To, to uh, Right now, they're in the independent or not sure camp, which means they're parking there waiting mm -hmm. to figure out what they do. Will they go back as the White House suggests just because they don't have a choice? Uh, more likely, they just won't vote. Uh, and I've, uh, you know, we've had hold your nose elections before and you got to give people a reason to go. Um, and frankly, at this point, they're not seeing it. And I'll tell you one, just one last point here is mm -hmm. that uh, when I said that was across the board uh, with almost every subgroup in the community, the issue of Palestine is different than Iraq. It's different than Muslim ban. It's different than civil liberty issues and stuff. It's the wound in the heart that doesn't heal. And so even though you're second, third generation uh, Egyptian, when Palestinians are getting massacred the way they are, it strikes a chord and it says, why is this happening? This should not be happening to these people. Um, and it... Uh, Three years of doing nothing except enabling Israel to do whatever it wanted to do in the West Bank, and now this, and people have had enough, and they're and they're 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 demonstrating it, and I think it it needs to be paid attention to. I don't want it to stay this way, but something has to give. They have to do something to change direction here. Yeah. What does that something look like, in your opinion? You know, I took note of the fact uh, Biden was in Minnesota and Minneapolis. Obviously, there's a you know sizable Muslim community there, and uh, he didn't have on his schedule a single meeting with a Muslim leader. So it yeah. doesn't even appear like they're taking you know they're taking the issue seriously in terms of outreach either to Arab Americans or to Muslims. Well, and let me, let's distinguish between Muslim and Arab. They are mm -hmm. distinct communities here. Of course, in yeah. the Muslim community in in, in Michigan is a, a significant number of Somalis, uh, the Ilhan uh, is, is from that community, mm -hmm. um, and African-American, Keith Ellison is a part mm -hmm. of that community. And he's heard from both of them, and they've, they've not been happy. Um, but I, I think that Michigan is largely Arab-American, that's a different story. And you say, what can he do? Um, meeting with them right now, that's a, he hasn't had a meeting with Arab-Americans, period, right? That, that's, that goes without saying. The issue, though, is that something dramatic. I mean, look, could he get, say no to Benjamin Netanyahu and say, stop it now? He could. He could do that. That would help. I mean, why there's no ceasefire, I don't understand. Why there's they, they talk about Palestinian self-determination. What are they going to do to get there? What are they going to do to stop the rampaging of settlers? They say we're concerned about settlers rampaging in the West Bank. Dozens of villages have been evacuated of Palestinians, afraid for their lives because they're out of control in the West Bank. The settlers are just rampaging through and scaring people uh, you know, from their homes. What is he going to do? The only thing that would make a difference is if he said to Netanyahu, stop it now, and then made a, a, an impact. That would actually happen. We've never told Israel, stop, no. If you don't do it, you're not going to get that damn $14 billion, and you may not get it anyway. 
because Palestinians needed to rebuild Gaza. There are things he can do concretely. He just hasn't done them. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good point that at this point it's not enough to have this sort of hand raise. Oh, maybe I want a humanitarian pause. There needs to be some sort of real concrete action using the leverage and the tools that the United States has um, in, in droves. James, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. It's so great to have your analysis on this. Thank yeah, we appreciate you, James. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. We'll have breaking coverage if needed um, over the weekend. You can probably expect at least something. Otherwise, we will see you all on Monday. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.